In this video, we're going to look at a game called Lights Out. What you see here is a clone of that game. It's called Delight for Mac. When you first launch the game, you are presented with an array of squares. Some of them are lit and some of them are not. The goal of the game is turn off all the lights. And the only operation you can do is click on each square. Now, when you click on a square, you will toggle the light on that square, as well as the one above, the one below, the one on the right, and the one on the left. So if I click on this square, you will see that I have turned off the lights of that square, the one above, the one below, and the one on the left, and the one on the right. Let me turn it back on. But what happens if you click on something on the edge? Something like this one here. In this case, it had no square on its right. So the only squares that are affected are the one above, the one below, and the one on the left. And there's a variant that we'll talk about later. But what I want to say here is that in a separate video, we actually looked at how we can solve this using linear algebra. And in there, we set things up by first writing the labels on these little squares, one up to the number of squares. So we start with one and all the way to 16. So with this labeling, if I click on square 10, then square 6, 9, 11, and 14 are affected. And if I click on square 1, square 1, square 2, and square 5 are affected. But I hope you can see that if you were the developer of this app, it looks kind of difficult to keep track of which squares are affected. right? Because if I press 6, you have 2, 5, 7, and 10 that are affected. If I press 11, it's 7, 10, 12, and 15. But if I now give you a different board, say 5 by 5, the whole numbering changes. But there's another way of labeling these squares, and it's using an ordered pair. So what we are going to do is we are going to assign two numbers to each square. The first number indicates the row, and the second number indicates the column. So the first row will be called row 0. okay, And that will give us the first number. So these squares in the first row have 0 in the first position. So the next row will get 1. And the next row will get 2. Now as far as the columns, the first column, which is the one on the left, will be called column 0. So the second component is going to be 0 for these three squares and 1 for these three squares and 2 for these last three squares. And now to calculate the squares that are affected, it's very easy. right? If I look at 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, well, the 1 above is just you take the first component at minus 1. So that's 0, 1. And the 1 below is just 2, 1. Whereas the 1 on the left, well, you subtract 1 from the second component. So I get 1, 0. Now, what if I look at 1, 2? Alright, same thing for the 1 above, for the 1 below, I get 0, 2 and 2, 2 respectively. And the 1 on the left, you subtract 1 from the second component, you get 1, 1. But to get the 1 on the right, you add 1. 1, 3. But 3 is too large, right? We have only 3 columns. So we can ignore that. And we know that 1, 2 doesn't have anything on the right. So with this labeling, it's a lot easier to calculate mentally, at least, which squares are affected. Now, I mentioned about a variant on this game. So what happens is, uh, let me bring up a bigger board. There's an option for this game called Wrap Around. So what happens is, if you click on square at the edge, actually, say for example, if you click on this square, the one on the right will wrap around to the extreme left square in the same row. So what happens is, the squares that are affected will be these three, of course, marked green, and this one. That's called wrapping around. So it looks like this is wrapping over to this side. All right, and let's see what happens if I click on the yellow square. All right, as you see, all the green squares are toggled. Let me click it back again. Now, with the labeling that we have, it's not hard to figure out the position of that wrapped around square. Because, for example, if I look at that square that I clicked, this is 2, 4. Right? The first row is 0, 
the second row is one and the third row is two for the first component whereas the last column is four because the columns are labeled zero one two three and four and if i add one to the second component right because i want to know what the square on the right is it's going to be five but five is exactly the number of columns we have so i treat it as a zero so what that means is if i add one to four i get five but five is the same as zero you can even go crazier than that okay rather than just wrap around one suppose you have a rule that says when you click on a square the squares that are affected are the ones that are two directly above two directly below two directly on the right and two directly on the left well in this case you use the same logic this square in the middle is 2 comma 2 so 2 above will be 0 comma 2 right you just subtract 2 from the first coordinate and so on but now what you, you pick something else say this one this one is 3 comma 3 subtract 2 from the first coordinate I get 1 comma 3 subtract 2 from the second coordinate I get 3 comma 1 but now I add 2 to the first component I get 5 comma 3 but remember 5 is the same as 0 so it's right here and then adding 2 to the second component I get 3 comma 5 but 5 is 0 so what we get is 3 comma 0 let me look at one more example just to illustrate okay say 0 0 all right two of them are easy to get 0 comma 2 and 2 comma 0 all right but now what if I subtract 2 from 0 what we get is minus 2 well let's just look at what is going to happen if we're going to wrap around by 2 going left 2 will land us onto this little square here all right and the same thing here so I'm going to get 3 comma 0 so what this is saying is minus 2 is the same as 3 okay and what about minus 1 okay so now if I start on this square this is 0 comma 1 one of the squares that would be affected is 0 minus 1 so 2 over there right 2 on the left count 2 so we go here and then wrap around so it will be here this square is 0 minus 1 but we know it's 0 comma 4 and what you can see is basically if you have a minus number minus 2 is the same as minus 2 plus 5 which is 3 and if we have minus 1 that's the same as minus 1 plus 5 which is 4 this gives you a glimpse into modulo arithmetic and that's a topic for another video